Hello everybody and welcome back. Thank you guys so much for following this. I really appreciate all of you that are following uh, me on, on, on this Design Your Life series. And all of you are going to have a way, way better 2017, 2016 and learn a lot of success principles. Today I am so, so, so honored to be with an amazing person who's meant so much to me in my life and been a huge, huge inspiration because she has gone from being really, a, she was a teacher as a background, but she was a stay-at-home mom with two kids when she first found out about this industry and there was really nothing going on in the entire um, like in all of Europe. She's really the pioneer of Europe within, within our company and she has gone on to just impact so many people's lives and have so much great things to share with us. I'm just going to get a few minutes of her time because her time is so precious. So um, Gudja and Christian, please uh, share with us a little bit about you know you first found out about this over 20 years ago now. You're coming up to 20 yep. years of your anniversary. Yep. And can you just share with us like what caught your interest in this industry? Why did you get started? And um, you know some of your challenges. Yeah. yeah, I can. Thanks for having me on. Uh, Daniel doing a fantastic job as always. Uh, I really I saw this opportunity. Yeah, almost you know it's over 20 years ago now. And at that time, <coughs> network marketing was something that I had never heard about, and this was absolutely new to me. I was uh, living abroad, I'm from Iceland, I was living in Luxembourg, and I didn't know a lot of people. So for me to start a network marketing business, the reason why I started was basically I had investigated a lot of different ways of building a business because I wanted to have a business. My husband was very successful working, you know, he had an MBA, working in a, in a, a banking industry, and uh, basically I wanted to have something for myself. So I had investigated a lot, and everything required a lot of income, a lot of uh, startup, uh, very much like uh, a lot of paperwork, and everything in Luxembourg was in France and German and everything, so for me that was not the easiest. So when I saw this opportunity that I, I found, being able to build a business by talking to people was something totally extraordinary to me. That I could basically, I didn't have to do all of that hard work of, of going through the legal parts of some offices in Luxembourg. So for me, I just started with total enthusiasm. Of course, totally different than today, no social media, and not even on internet, I couldn't Google my company or anything. But in this way, I could, what I could do was to be myself. I could basically tell my story, I could tell people that I, I'm a mom, uh, my world at that time, because I had only been living a short time in Luxembourg, I couldn't teach there because I had an Icelandic teaching uh, career, but that wasn't really working in Luxembourg. So I could tell people that I'm out here to find people to build uh, something extraordinary. And I got people with me, and you know, the first things of course were was, uh, tough in the beginning because we had photocopies of uh, things, we didn't Google anything, you know, we had a fax machine where we got our information, but we didn't know any better, and that's the thing. People think now, oh my God, how could you do it at that time? But the thing is that you don't know what you don't have. So I couldn't compare it to having social media. I just worked with what I had. And for me, the basic thing is exactly the same today. It doesn't matter if you do it through social media or if you do it walking to talking, walking and talking or, or your friends or, or family. It's people. You're working with people and their desire and their willingness to make, like you say, this year better than the last. Their desire to have something more in life. And I totally believe I could do that. And I have. We have an amazing lifestyle. I had my third child in the first uh, year in my business. So I built my business around the children, around uh, basically, yeah, the the household, and uh, that you know, running around with with uh, my car everywhere. But this is, you know, I've always, even though it was sometimes tough, I always felt I was doing it for a, a very good reason because I had my goals very clear. And this is the, the thing: you have to know where you're going. You have to have your goals clear to to basically. Can I just interrupt you here really yeah. quickly? What was your first goal in this business? My first goal was to get a phone that did not was, was not attached to a wall. <laughs> so that's a totally different than here. That small goals and big goals. So I had small goals, you know, that you could up, you know, have in the beginning. But then I, you know, it was basically when we started grasping me and my husband because he came on in the first year, uh, the first months actually. But one and a half year later, he quit his job and came 100% with me in this business. The thing is that. 
then we started to dream together and say, okay, what is it really? And you know, what kind of lifestyle do we want? And it's the time freedom that we value the most. And this business was able to take you to pretty much semi-retire in Spain for a while, is that right? Yeah, yeah. seven years into the business or something, we went, we went to live in Spain with our three children. Uh, we chose Spain because we sat down with the kids and we had all kinds of options. Where do we want to live? Where, you know, if we, if we have, which we had, uh, you know, the choice, where would we like to be? And we decided south of Spain, loved it, were there for four years, didn't do almost anything for those four, four years. At the end of that time, our business was bigger than we started. Amazing, amazing. So over all these years, I mean, especially I guess your first seven years when you built your business, what kept you motivated? Like, how did you stay motivated? Did you have some challenges that you had to overcome? Or of course, I had a lot of challenges. I mean, this uh, for me first, I didn't understand when people said no or people people didn't get it because I got it so on, a, on such a gut level that I I didn't understand that everybody wouldn't do that. So for me, that was a big surprise. But, uh, and, and a challenge, of course. But, uh, you know, realizing that it's not for everybody is, is one part of this business. And sometimes it's for people later down the road. It depends on people's timing. Uh, the challenges are so many. I mean, of course, you, you have, it, it's going through the same thing that any person has when they build a business. Doesn't really matter. I mean, we don't have totally different challenges than other people in, in traditional businesses have. We, we have to make sure that we have volume going. We have to make sure that we have, you know, new people coming into the business and all of that, which is a natural thing that you, you really start to, to understand and, and uh, work with as a challenge. Amazing. And what uh, have you uh, uh, at any time like worked on your mindset? Like, what do you have you done for that? And you know, just to stay positive and. In the beginning, we had because of course we didn't have internet. We couldn't Google and get you know listen to something. Uh, we had uh, we, uh, small audio tapes that we put because I was driving a lot, uh, building my business. So I had these audio tapes in my car. Those were. Uh, a little, you know, two, three years old uh, recordings from a convention that my company did. And so I was listening to leaders in the business that had already done it. There were no success stories in Europe when we started, but those were all in America. So I was just feeding my mind with, okay, how did these people do it? Amazing. And have you ever gone outside of within our company and like, you know, listen to other personal development uh, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tony like Robbins that. and all of these, you know, I, 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 uh, a lot of them actually, and I, on, both on video tips books, I think it's extremely important mm -hmm. and not only on, um, you know, once in a while, once a year or something, but to do that on a regular basis and feed your mind with that positivity because you get ideas. If you read a book, if you, you know, you're, I read Think and Grow Rich in the beginning, I, many years later I, I read it again and I took out totally different things from it. So you can reread the books that you read in the beginning and then because you have developed, you have grown in your business you will actually get other things out of the material. Hmm. All right, so to switch topics here a little bit, I mean, in your business, you pretty much have some of the fastest growing teams really in the world within, within our company, and you've seen a lot and studied a lot what these teams are doing in terms of social media and so on. How would you say, you know, this has changed the business at all? And, and are we seeing people, you know, have success quicker than what you did or? Oh, uh, <laughs> it has changed the business a lot. Uh, in in basically the speed and quality I would say as well because when we started, I, I was 31 when I started my business, uh, people in, in this industry were my age and older. It basically you didn't really have young people doing this and so that was my market. Today, those baby boomers that we were talking to at that time, they are still eight, they are now 80 or something and rocking it and they are still wanting to, you know, really all the good things out of life and on top of that we had all the millennial generation coming in and teaching with, with different problem solving and uh, uh, methods and basically really doing things in, a, in a, such a, an intriguing way that we, the older generation in this industry, we learn so much from them and we are so thankful for you know, this added uh, aspect of the business because all of a sudden we, our market and, our, and is totally wide open to everybody. Brilliant, excellent. So if you have somebody that's you know, looking at this industry right now, what would you say are some of the important factors in, in, in how they choose a business, you know, which company they go with, and uh, also, oh yeah, so let's start there, first of all. With how they choose the company? Yeah. Well, for me, it's check the management, check the, the, the basically 
what, what are the values of the company. For me, the values of the company are, are extremely important. When you know that the original owners or the, or, the, or the founders of the company are still involved and they, are, they have very strong values in uh, how they treat the distributors, how they treat basically the world as well. This for me is extremely important. Uh, strong finances, that they are strong and that they have a mature uh, business because for me, uh, I mean so many companies, I don't know, 60, 70,000 companies have been in, uh, created in this industry, but most of them are gone. I mean they, they just go, it's, it's like a revolving door of companies. But you want to be with those that are there, that have stayed for a while and there are things that, you know, that warning signs uh, that you don't want to have uh, go to a company that you have to pay your way in and all of these things. That There are many small warning signs that you can see on the way. To so stay away from any company, obviously, where you just have to pay to be a part of it, to yeah. pay to play. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, not a real, that's not a real business, really. <laughs> okay, great. And um, if for some, some of the people that have gotten started in our industry, uh, maybe especially our company, like what are your, 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 some of, maybe your top two, three tips for these people? When you're starting? Yeah. My first tip was be coachable. Mm -hmm. Learn from the people that you, and I've, I've said this the whole time, I knew a lot of things as a, as a teacher and I could see, okay, I can teach this business. Uh, I've never been in business. My husband had made a master, you know, he's a master in business and he, you know, he had really good you know, knowledge in this area. But still, we decided to be coachable because we had not built this business or we had not been in this industry. So be coachable, number one. When you make a decision, make a really strong decision. I think, you know, don't make these decisions lightly. Make them, and when you really make a business decision and you say, okay, I'm gonna go for it. I mean, we did it so big that we, we were cheering in, you know, with champagne and just really like, okay, now we are really doing this and this is, you know, there is no turning back. It's like burning your bridges. Brilliant, excellent. And so, um, for anybody that has these like massive views, I mean, were you thinking from the very beginning, hey, I'm, I'm going to the top of this company, I'm going to make not just one million, but five, you're very close here to 10 million in earnings that you've made, and, and obviously having this amazing, amazing lifestyle. I mean, was that, was that in your reality already from the start, or was that something that takes time to develop? No, that was not in my reality. <laughs> As a teacher, you kind of mentally block your thing, you're like, okay, okay I, I have this teacher salary. Teachers, at least in Iceland at that time, did not have a good salary. So it took me three months to get to the teacher salary. So I thought like, oh, so that's possible. So because of that, I was like, maybe I can just double it. And in three more months, I doubled my teacher salary. I could never have been a teacher twice. So I thought, wow, this is amazing. Then I started to uh, basically play with the, the idea of getting to the salary of my husband because I thought that salary was a humongous. So for me this, you know, I took this, this and I had to, for my mental thing, I had to basically take it in steps. I could not see myself as a, as a million dollar earner or anything because I had to take it, you know, society has kind of pushed us down and it took me time to believe that I could basically have that. And today with like complete financial and time freedom, like how does that feel like to, to, to achieve that? The time freedom actually is the most important. I love it. We have had such a, it's, we lived such a privileged lifestyle with, uh, you know, being able to bring our children wherever we want in the world, and and we've done that. We've traveled the world, and we, we've done things that that have been on our goal board for a long time. And we just say, okay, we're gonna tick off these things, and and basically you value your relationships and and the the time that you have with people in a in a very important way because you know that this is precious These are, the time is precious absolutely amazing thank you so much uh, Gudrun, for for coming on here and sharing all these stories with us you are absolutely an amazing inspiration to so many people and and we all just love following your story and, and just appreciate your time. I mean, like obviously you could do anything in the world and you choose to come uh, to spend some time with us and share these stories with us. We're all so, so thankful, so. You're so welcome and it's amazing to be here and, and uh, you know, love what you're doing with this and uh, I, I just love seeing it grow.